Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dan from Daniel Hagley Movie Reviews, and I just watched the new Charles Play film. Hmm. I didn't mean it. I know. I know, but I didn't mean it. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So. Charles play. Wow, where do I begin with that? I'm not opposed to the idea of having Charles play as a AI device. I wasn't opposed to them changing the voice and not using Brad Dorif because they're changing the source of the evil, so they why not change the voice? I mean that's fine. Um Let's talk about good things. So the good things were that they didn't try to recreate the classic Charles play, other than the fact that they had a evil doll. Uh, they changed the doll itself, they changed the voice of the doll, they changed the doll's origins. Um, so it wasn't like they were just trying to take a good idea and redo it. Um, they thought let's let's make it another let's do it another way and really the Charles Play franchise is still very alive you know they're doing a TV show soon um, and they they the last sequel for the Charles the original Charles Play the last sequel uh, wasn't too long ago a couple of years ago so with the cult of Chucky so <clears throat> you know it's still very much alive and I think they just wanted to go off. With, on a different idea. Someone wants to pitch this idea to them. They know the Charles Play films always do very well. So when they heard it, they thought, yeah, actually, I like the idea of that. Well, it was shit. And here's why. If you take away the soul of the doll, there's no reason for it to be evil. And this is so obvious throughout the film. They tried to make it like Chucky was learning evil stuff as it went, trying to please his master, if you like, the Andy, new Andy Barkley character. Um, and they tried to make it so that he was doing things that would have pleased, that would appease his his master. And because his master used to watch horror films and he's in a bit bad neighbourhood and he sees him laughing at something that's a bit evil or a bit nasty, Chucky reenacts these things and try, trying to make, you know, which would normally be not possible because his built-in sort of uh, built-in defenses that uh, an AI device would have would stop him doing it. But it shows you a bit at the beginning where a factory worker on the assembly line is putting these Chucky dolls together in certain batteries and so on and so forth. And he somehow has access to the core coding of these dolls as well uh, and he sabotages one of the dolls because his boss or what you think is his boss I guess comes up and he is really bullying him slapping him around the head for drifting off you know not for not doing his job and, and looking at the wall for a second he comes over and he's like hey you're not getting on with your work you go over and he's smacking him around and stuff and really bullying him and he then thinks right that's it i'm gonna make this doll evil and take away and it shows you safety precautions and all that were all deleted uh so this doll then is set out into the world and is um able to learn evil things and every time it does something evil its eyes go red it's interconnected with all of the AI devices around. Uh, Andy Barkley has a hearing aid, which he can talk directly to, which you find out more towards the end. He, other than a couple of stupid bits I pointed out to you, it doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, it just feels like they've chopped and cut this film together so badly. Like, they go down the whole route of Andy trying, Andy noticing the, the doll's evil, him trying to explain it to his mum, Playboy or Aubrey Plaza, and she just doesn't believe him obviously because he's a, a slightly he's he's a, a teenager making up stories about a doll she's like it's just a doll right okay so that's that's realistic what isn't realistic is when it becomes obvious that there is something evil about the doll 
uh, how they deal with it. And like she closes the doll in the cupboard and the doll breaks out by smashing a little window. And then she sees the doll playing with Andy again and she's thinking, oh, well, he's got a friend. And she just doesn't even, the, the fact that the, the doll broke his way out of this little cupboard, which has got like glass panels and he smashed his way out through and made a hole to open the cat. That just doesn't ever get talked about again. And there's a scene towards the end where he is like connected in this, the, the, the pre-release of the new buddy doll is, and they're all there waiting for the new buddy doll, like the, the buddy bear and stuff, all these generation two dolls that they're releasing. And he turns up and he has sellotaped or, or glued these razor blades to all of the propellers on these drones. And he's flying them around and they're cutting people and slicing people's throats. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was scary when it was the, when with the original because Andy Barkley was very young and you can imagine someone in that age's circumstances dealing with a doll, but dealing with this, like a teenager and three of his friends as well, or two of his friends dealing with a doll that's shin high. I mean, why don't they just go and kick it, you know, run up and take a good and, and oof it over the, over the building. You know, it's just, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, they're all, and, 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 and all of this, this doll's really strong. Like I know he's a robot, but they don't put in like titanium hinges and stuff on and a pneumatic sort of, um, you know, how is it suddenly so strong? Because it's become a thinking and it does think for itself. It's always the end. It becomes like uh, Mark Hamill's voice, more like sinister and stuff like that. Um, but you, it just seemed very empty. Like when you, once they got rid of the dollars, that that's it, got rid of it. Nothing to worry about. But when it was voodoo, when it was in the old one, it was voodoo uh, that was driving and he was trying to jump into another body. That really give a continuation of the, the storyline and a real sense of struggle. Like he's, he needs to get into the next body. That's why he's following Andy Barkey around, you know? I think this would have worked a lot better if they just made it a completely different film. It would have appealed to people that are looking at the AI thing and the development of that, but it is not a child's play film. It is really not a child's play film. Um, and there'll probably be a sequel, but um, I won't be waiting for the trailer or interested too much. I will be interested in the TV show that comes out. But uh, yeah, this just seemed really stupid. And I was quite optimistic, actually. I thought, well, I can, I, I'm quite good at detaching myself from the originals. I like remakes, unpopular opinion there, but I like remakes. And I was quite optimistic and was waiting for this to come out and see how what they've done with the idea. Uh, and it just seems like it was just one bad decision after another, as far as the storyline went. And the people that were used it just didn't make the story very believable. Sorry, but that's what I think. Yeah, I suppose you should watch it if you're a Child's Play fan. Maybe give it two out of ten. It's, it's that bad. Anyway, until next time, see you soon and subscribe.